Hello everyone, welcome to Study Nurture channel. So today uh, in our video we are going to discuss about comparison of performance of reciprocating and centrifugal compressors. So we have two compressors. One is reciprocating and other is centrifugal compressor and we are going to discuss in detail with the help of graphs that how these two uh, compressors differ in their performance and which compressor performs well under different conditions. So let's start. The centrifugal compressors have high efficiency over a large range of load and a large volumetric displacement for its size as compared to reciprocating compressors. So from the first point we can see that the centrifugal compressors have high efficiency as compared to reciprocating compressors so they perform better and uh, over a large range of load the efficiency of centrifugal compressor is greater as compared to reciprocating compressors and these have large volumetric displacement the centrifugal compressor has large volumetric displacement also in addition to this, the centrifugal compressor has many other desirable features. The most important feature is flat head capacity characteristic as compared to reciprocating compressors. So uh, from these three points, we are concluding that the somewhere uh, centrifugal compressor is better than the reciprocating compressors. And one of the most uh, important feature is flat head capacity characteristic. Now we will discuss what is flat head capacity characteristics. So this graph elaborates so much about reciprocating and centrifugal compressors. So let's understand this graph. On the y-axis we have taken evaporator temperature and this evaporator temperature is in degree C and on the x-axis we have taken tons of refrigeration. So 100 ton, 140 ton, 180 so this is tons of refrigeration or we can say capacity so flat head capacity characteristic variation with evaporator temperature so this is capacity and this is evaporator temperature so you can see that uh, the centrifugal compressor curve is much flatter as compared to reciprocating compressor curve so how uh, we can elaborate this point from the figure we see that for a centrifugal compressor evaporator temperature changes only from 2 degree C to 7.5 degree C when the load changes from 100 to 240 tons. So now see here when the load is 100 to 240 the change in evaporator temperature is very small that is from 2 degree C to 7.5 degree C. So we can say the variation in centrifugal compressors evaporator temperature is very less with the load okay and but the reciprocating compressor you can see for the same load for the same capacity 100 to 240 the variation in evaporator temperature is very high that is from minus 11 to uh, approximate 7 point uh, i think 7 degree c okay so whereas evaporator temperature changes from minus 11 degree c to 6 degree c for the same load change for a reciprocating compressor. So you can elaborate or conclude from this point that the variation in evaporator temperature is very high in reciprocating compressors. Uh, and uh, the centrifugal compressors, the variation in uh, evaporator temperature is low. So the flat head capacity characteristic is an uh, important feature for a reciprocating compressor. Another advantage is feature for of the centrifugal compressor is non-overloading characteristic. So apart from the flat head capacity, the second uh, advantage is feature is non-overloading characteristic of centrifugal compressors as compared to reciprocating one. From the figure, we see that the centrifugal compressors, there is a reduction in power requirement with increase in condensing temperature. So here another graph, another performance curve. Uh, this curve is basically the x-axis we are elaborating brake power or we can say power requirement. And on y-axis there is condensing temperature. 
and uh, for centrifugal compressor you can see the curve which I am pointing with the mouse so this curve shows that with increase in brake power now uh, with increase in brake power the condensing temperature reduces in centrifugal compressors or in a reverse way we can say that with increase in condensing temperature with increase in condensing temperature the brake power or power requirement reduces okay so when we increase the condensing temperature the power requirement reduces in a centrifugal compressor but for a reciprocating compressor there is opposite relation with increase in condensing temperature the power requirement also increases okay so for centrifugal compressors the increase in condensing temperature there is decrease in power requirement and for reciprocating compressors with the increase in condensing temperature there is increase in power requirement okay so from here we can say that when the condensing temperature increases the overloading of the centrifugal compressor is less because the power power requirement is less in centrifugal compressor that therefore it is better performing uh, than centrifugal uh, reciprocating compressors okay also there is a reduction in refrigerating capacity of centrifugal compressor with increase in condensing temperature as shown in figure b so here in another diagram we can see that another performance that is capacity the x-axis we have tons of refrigeration capacity of refrigeration and along y-axis we have condensing temperature okay so when we increase the condensing temperature when we increase the condensing temperature the refrigeration capacity decreases in centrifugal compressors hence there is no overloading of the motor as the condensing temperature increases so as we have discussed for a centrifugal compressor the power requirement is less when the condensing temperature high is high so when the condensing temperature increases there is no overloading of the motor in centrifugal compressors however for reciprocating compressors there is a small increase in power requirement with increase in condensing temperature so as you can see for the reciprocating compressors there is small increase in power requirement with increase in condensing temperature okay thus there will be overloading of the motor so in a reciprocating compressor because there is increase in power requirement so there will be overloading of the motor so that is disadvantage of a reciprocating compressor also there is a small decrease in refrigeration capacity of reciprocating compressor with increase in condensing temperature as shown in figure b so for reciprocating compressors you can see so with increase in condensing temperature there is decrease in capacity a very small decrease in capacity in a reciprocating compressor the effect of speed on the refrigeration capacity and power requirement is shown in figure a and b for both centrifugal and reciprocating compressors so the third characteristic is a variation of speed so what happens we have taken speed along the x-axis and refrigeration capacity along the y-axis so when we increase the speed that is from 80 to 100 the capacity increases when we increase the speed the centrifugal compressor the capacity of refrigeration also increases and same is the case for reciprocating compressors but this case is more sensitive in centrifugal compressor because with a small change in speed the refrigeration capacity increases so much quickly but for reciprocating compressors there is a, a large change in speed and the refrigeration capacity also increases in reciprocating compressors and uh, what happens with the power requirement uh, with small change in uh, speed with the small increase in speed the power requirement also increases in uh, centrifugal compressors and same happens with the reciprocating compressor with small increase in speed with the uh, large increase in speed the brake power or power requirement also increases in 
reciprocating compressors so in this video we have discussed uh, some of the performance characteristics of centrifugal and reciprocating compressors and hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, so thank you very much we will meet in the next video and uh, subscribe for this channel for more knowledgeable videos thank you very much